Hello there, welcome back. Good to see you back on this channel again. So this uh, session is going to be on PHP. We're going to understand how to access the data entered by an user using an HTML form using PHP. In the last session, we were looking at some JavaScript form validation concepts. There we have understood how to validate the data entered by an user in a form using JavaScript. So after validation, we'll be submitting the data to the server-side script where we are using PHP as the server-side script. So here we're going to get the data that has been entered by the user in the form and we're going to access that inside PHP. So we're not going to do any JavaScript validation in this uh, demonstration since it's going to take a lot of time to add JavaScript code. So if you are interested in adding JavaScript validation, please refer to my previous lecture on JavaScript form handling and you can very well include those validations in your code. Let's start. This is going to be a demo on form handling using PHP code. So what I mean by form handling, user enters some data using the forms and we're going to access the data using our PHP scripts. So let's uh, start with this simple HTML page. The title for this is form handling using PHP. And uh, we're going to have some basic form here. Let's create a form. Action is the same page, test.php. We're going to have the PHP code in the same page. Method, since we are submitting data to the server, we'll use post. And uh, on submit, so we can include some JavaScript validation. Here, I'm not going to have this validation. That's what I was telling you. You can refer to my previous lecture and you can include the methods in JavaScript to perform the validation. Here, we'll just uh, simply return true. So no validations actually performed here in JavaScript. Our focus will be only on PHP. So we'll have a label. Now first, we'll get the username as the user to enter his username. And uh, input type text. So text input we are going to get. Name is username. ID is uh, username and we'll make it required break another label maybe we'll get the password too so we'll call this password we'll ask the user to enter his password enter your password and uh, input type uh, will be password here we'll have a name field name name is equal to password and we'll also have an ID field ID is equal to password break next we'll have this uh, radio option we'll ask the user to enter his gender so label we'll call this gender so we can ask the user to select your gender like that we'll have a break here and then now we'll have the input type to be radio when you're working with radio, we have to give name. Uh, name should be the same, right? Name is equal to gender. And value, we should add value. Value is equal to male. So this is what will be accessed from the server uh, when you submit this radio option. When the user submits the radio option, the value will be going to the server. And what the user will see, that is male love break. So our first radio input is ready. We'll take the next radio input. Name is gender, value is female here. So this is what will be shown to the user. Rick. So our uh, gender input is ready. Next, we'll go on with the checkbox input for subjects. So we'll have a label. We'll call this uh, subjects. Uh, we will say select your favorite uh, subjects and uh, here input type will be checkbox we'll give a class say the class uh, um, definitions will be helpful while you're working with javascript i'm just giving it here so checkbox class name and the name field is important we are going to use the name field while we're accessing this data item in the php script so name is actually an array of elements, right? So we have to say it's an array. User can select many elements. So all these elements will be 
concatenated into this array. So value, say so what value will go to the server that is also there. So we'll call this first subject to be chemistry. And what the user sees while he's checking things, this is the value. Likewise, we'll have some three subjects. Let me replicate this uh, input type checkbox, class checkbox, name will be the same, value will be maybe, we'll give uh, uh, PHP and uh, we can select PHP. Finally, English. So he is selecting English here. So our checkbox input is ready. And the next thing is uh, we'll go in for a select option. So we'll uh, give a label to the user. He'll be selecting his country. So we'll ask him to enter his country or select your country, select your country. And um, here we have to use the select for uh, creating this drop down. Name is country, we'll use the ID, ID is country. And we have to give the options here, maybe option. First option will not have a value, it will be selected by default. Selected and disabled after uh, he selects a value. So this is the uh, first element and we can say select an option below. We can also make this required. And we'll go on with other options. Um, option value here is India. We'll have some two countries. This is what the user sees India. Let's replicate this. Now it's US and you can have US. So our uh, select is also done. So, so drop down is created. Next we'll ask the user to use a range slider, say uh, skill, we can say, select your skill level, select your skill level. Skill level can be in a range of uh, between one and 10. So input type is equal to range, min is uh, equal to one. And uh, max uh, can be 10. In steps of uh, uh, one, the value can be incremented and value by default will be one. We can make this required and we can give a name. Name for this name is, uh, we'll call this skill. We can also give an ID. ID, we can call this to be skill. So our uh, input uh, range slider is also done. We have finished creating the form. Now let us see how to access the values entered by the user using this form within our PHP code. So let's start writing our PHP code now. So it's uh, PHP. So our entire PHP code is going to be within this block. First, we'll see how to retrieve the username entered by the user. So we'll be using the name field for accessing the value entered by the user using the text box. Likewise, for the password field too, we'll be using the name field. For gender too, we'll be using the name that we are given to our gender options. And for uh, selecting the options using checkbox, again, we'll be going with the name field. So these are very important. When you're using the name field, this specific value will be accessed from within the PHP code. So two fields, name and value is very important while you're working with PHP. So again, we are going to use this name and it's going to be an array of elements that will be populated. We'll be running a for each loop to get the elements from within the array. If the user selects chemistry, then this value gets populated. If he selects PHP, then this value gets populated. 
for country uh, we are going to use the name field again and uh, we have given the name to be country here so name plays a crucial role and the value that we'll be receiving will be that whatever that we have given inside our value attributes again for range selector the name is important so using the name we'll be able to get the value selected by the user for the date again the date we are going to use the name attribute and get the value that has been selected by the user let's take a look at this first let's get the first let's check whether the user has submitted we'll be using this is set function is set and then we'll call dollar underscore post so here we are going to enter the name property for a submit that is submit so if the user has submitted, then what we can get is we can get the username. So we'll call that dollar username. How you get that is we'll use the super global variable dollar post. And then here we need to populate the name value. Say for this attribute name, whatever value we have entered, that is username that we have to give. You have to give that in quotes. So whatever value the user enters using the text box will be now caught using our variable dollar username within PHP. So this dollar post, why we are using post here? Because the method we have given is post. The HTTP method we are using here is post. Whenever you are submitting data to the server, please use this method post. Now let's echo the username. So we'll say the user name is dot dollar username. So we have received the username. Now let's get the password. So for password, again, we'll use dollar underscore post. And then what is the name? What is the value we are given for the name attribute? It is password. We'll echo the password is dot password dollar password next we'll get the uh, gender so we'll call this dollar gender in php is equal to use the super global variable post and then the value that you're given for the name attribute is gender so we'll say echo the gender you have selected is concatenate the gender value so it's dot dollar gender. Next, uh, the value entered in the checkboxes. So user can select multiple values. So we'll get that in subjects here is equal to again the super global variable post. What is the name field we have given here? Sub. Now, if, if you want to print all these subjects selected, you have to run a for each loop for each in subjects as dollar value because a user can select multiple check options right so we should run a for loop echo dollar value we're printing all these subjects next we'll get the input entered by the user using this drop down option the select option so we call that dollar country again dollar underscore post what is the name value it's country the next input you're going to have is the range selector. Again, we'll use the name attribute here. The value for the name attribute is skill. We'll use the name attribute for accessing the value within PHP. So we'll call dollar skill underscore level is equal to dollar underscore post, whatever name value we have given, that is skill. And we can say echo the skill level you have selected is dot dollar skill level finally we have this date attribute uh, so input date is the value given for the name field so we'll get that we'll call this join date is equal to dollar underscore post just give the value populated in the name attribute that is input date and we can echo the input date you have 
selected is dot dollar join date okay that's it we have received all the input uh, inside our php code let's execute this let's check whether our code is really working fine so this is our form let me enter the username as satish password as satish gender male favorite subjects let's select all these subjects chemistry php english select your country india skill level say this is one two three skill level is three we'll select a date let's submit so here is this response that is getting generated from our php code username is satish password is satish gender you have selected is male subjects you have selected all the subjects chemistry php and english the country you have selected is india the skill level you have selected is 3 the input date you have selected is 2023 that is 5th march uh, 2023 our code is working fine so with that uh, we are coming to an end of this session so what we have learned in this session is we learned how to create an html form and how to access the data that is being entered by the user using the form from within our php code we have already seen how to validate this uh, using javascript code in our earlier session so if you want to add some javascript validation please refer to my previous lecture on form handling using javascript the next step will be populating this code into our mysql database so we'll be looking at some mysql queries and mysql database connections in our coming classes with that we are coming to an end of this session hope you had a good insight on how to get the data entered by a user using html forms from within php if you have any questions you can leave your comments below and thank you all for listening take care